moving along now. For the better part of a week, the streets of Lagos have become a haven for unbridled criminality as gangs of unemployed youth harass and exploit innocent road users. This elevated impunity has been going on despite the fact that a 24-hour curfew was and is still in place all over the state, imposed by the governor at the beginning of the hashtag NSARS crisis. For a state which is home to a large chunk of Nigeria's population, including majority of her unemployed young people, the chaos engendered by this week's crisis, Lagos has served to reflect a very disturbing index about Nigeria's unemployment situation. Joining us now for an educated perspective on the situation is Issa Aremu, renowned trade unionist and labor leader, member National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, and vice president, Global Industrial Union, Welcome to the program. Good morning, sir. Omrit. Yeah, good, Omrit. good morning, Tundu, and uh, let, me let me extend the same compliment to your other two comrades. <laughs> uh, good morning. Uh, uh, Thank you for joining us. Well, before and, uh, we begin to talk only, about... Only you, must, you, must, you, must, you must pay your union dues. <laughs> <laughs> before we begin to talk about union matters and the mayhem across different oh. parts of Nigeria. Let's start with the uh, president's uh, national broadcast yesterday in which he addressed the security situation in the country and the uh, you know, outcome of the end SARS protests and the end insecurity now uh, protests in parts of the uh, country. What's your take uh, on that uh, speech, which uh, has uh, generated uh, different kinds of reactions across the country? Well, thank you, uh, Ruben. I, I think before the speech, after watching your live footage now, you know, honestly, I'm quite downcast. And I don't know how to describe it, but uh, there's a saying in Yoruba, you know, I hope my Yoruba is still strong, that Oropo is there. You know, you are literary guys. I think you may be able to help me to interpret it. Oropo is there, you know. Uh, proposition, you know, swallows uh, a <laughs> response. Uh, it's a tough one. As somebody who has uh, engaged in collective actions over the years, as a unionist, as an activist, I've never seen this kind of uh, outcome of what promised to be an organized legitimate protest against uh, SSEs of some members of police force. Uh, then degenerated, degenerated into SSEs, open-ended SSEs, in which we're engaging in mutually assured destruction. Uh, and I hope the earlier we get out of this, the better. Uh, I'm not really a proponent of the concept of failed state, uh, because I believe that some of these concepts generated in Europe and America are, are meant to promote Afro-pessimism. -pes uh, that we can never get things done, you know, and there are many areas we've got some things done. Uh, America lost close to about uh, over 200,000 citizens to COVID-19. Africa has never, you know, recorded as much, but nobody has said America is a face state, you know, but when there are a few infractions in Africa, uh, we are being called face state. But the way we are going, what I've seen in recent time, and I hope Nigeria will lead, we are the biggest you know, country, the home of uh, black men and women in the world. Uh, my, what is even worrisome to me is that we're having failed society, you know, and for me that's more scary. I mean, when you destroy limited infrastructure like BR, BRT buses, I mean, that has been a real good new images of Lagos, that we're now having public transport replacing all these uh, privatized transportation. Now we're burning them few numbers. Uh, we burn offices, you know, and it becomes quite addictive. Uh, yeah. But the one that is even more worrisome, Comrade. we can replace... Comrade? Comrade, to interrupt from uh, Governor Babajide Sonwulu's uh, visit to Ajerumi Falodo and other parts of Lagos to assess the extent of damage arising from uh, the uh, riots in the city in the last two days.
right, so the governor just uh, greeted the crowd here and um, he told them that he's sorry for what happened. He's very apologetic. And um, okay, sure. we, are still, we are still in front of the Nigerian Police Force Divisional Headquarters, Lieni Alaba. That's Ojo Road, still in Ajeromi Felodun. It is, it is the same um, police station. This is the second police station that was also burned by the hoodlums. Yes. There are two police stations. We've passed the first one. This is the second one on this Ajeromi Felodu. So it's just a brief stop that the governor did, and then afterwards, um, people were hailing him, and then he went, greeted them, and then apologized to them for what they've been doing. They watch your very well. Okay. 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 Alright, so we are on our way out again to another place where damage is uh, occurred during uh, the COVID. We are still in Ajegule. We are still in Ajerami Ifelodu. <laughs> yes. I mean, you can see uh, Ozi very comprehensive um, with the governor as regards areas damage. Still in Ajerami, uh, Felodu. Dr. Bati, just <clears throat> imagine the mammoth destruction. These are just two locations in Ajerami, Felodu. Now imagine he's not come to Sekoma yet in Leki. He's not come to other parts of Lagos. Fagba that you talked about. Suru Lere. Suru Lere. He's not come to all those. This is just two locations already. Well, terrible. But let's go back to uh, Comrade uh, Isa Remo. Comrade Isa Remo, sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, we had to take uh, that report from uh, Governor Sonolu's tour of uh, troubled spots across uh, Lagos. So you were uh, making a point still on the uh, uh, fallout of the president's broadcast yesterday. Yes, so uh, as I was saying, uh, Ruben, I mean, it uh, is the lowest period for all of us, uh, and I think uh, the earlier we get out of this mess, the better. I was just make, trying to make a point that we can replace the buses, the buildings, but what we can replace is, is human beings you know, whose lives have been wasted, whether by shooting allegedly by the army and the police, or even the, the uh, you know, we ourselves, so some of some, what I've seen, some of those criminals who are born in you know, officers in uniform, you know, we can't replace those lives. So uh, my fear is that we don't move from, uh, you know, failing state to complete failed society. Now, to this president's speech, uh, Dr. Ruben, I want to say better late than never. Uh, and I'm uh, quite touched that the president could be humble enough to accept that he had to make the speech because he listened to the concerned Nigerians. And I think the takeaway from there is that we should keep on putting pressure on those who have elected, you know, to make sure they do what is necessary. And I want to commend your platform, like other platform, making the point that uh, it was time the president addressed the nation, because after Almighty God, what we have uh, is our president and those people that we've elected into office. Uh, uh, so I want to say better late than never, although this will have come much more earlier, and I thought maybe we could have prevented some of those carnages. Uh, I also went through the speech, very brief, you know, just about a thousand words, which is okay. I mean, it's not so much how long, but how uh, impactful. Uh, to hear that the president is also pained, he said so he was pained. He also said the voices of the youth have been heard loud and clear, you know, uh, and I thought, it was before dialogue of the deaf, but I'm quite interested that the president had listened. Uh, but I want to say that there are a couple of issues that the president uh, addressed there, you know, reminding of some of those programs that are supposed to impact on the youth. Uh, but there are also some missing links there, you know. Uh, uh, to do, I think you started the question. You know, we are paying the price for youth exclusion in national development. This is the price we are paying, and it's long overdue. We pay the price for excluding them from schools. 
You know, I mean, Ruben, possibly you are the only one there. Me and you went to universities in the 70s, 80s. Uh, we all had cause to protest, but there was no time. We, we didn't run the, the curriculum. You know, our perspective was intact. You know, schools, we had uninterrupted uh, uh, educational service delivery. But today, you close that university one week, two weeks, three weeks. Seven weeks. I mean, seven months. I mean, it's it's only. I mean, how can we latch into the fourth industrial revolution when you kept the youth, excluded them from schools to be on the street? Then you also keep them out of the labour market. Those who have graduated, uh, open unemployment in Nigeria today is about fifty percent. You know, and it's likely driven by the youth. You know, those who have graduated who couldn't get jobs. Official statistics say we during COVID almost twenty-seven million. You know, joined the unemployment market now. So what I'm saying here is that I expect the president's address to be very strong on youth employment. And interestingly, uh, this government also had a new proposition on the, a proposition on the table to create 1,000 jobs in 774 uh, uh, local government. You know, that's about I mean, I expect the speech to say hit the ground running, the two ministers of Ministry of uh, Employment and Labor to drive this agenda. And it's all about public works. Uh, before the you know, legitimate process was uh, rudely hijacked by lumpen proletarians, you know, those who are also on the margins, you know what those youths were doing on the streets. A lot of entrepreneurship, a lot of organization, they were even cleaning the environment. Now, this is the time to have official form, I mean, formalization of that kind of energy. You know, get them out of the streets, let them get creatively employed. So I expect the president's speech to go beyond the empower, which is quite okay, you know, trade that money, to talk of how to generate jobs. And the real sustainable jobs, uh, Ruben, we have been at this level, we've been discussing it for long, is to revive the industries, you know, to revive. There is no any working man or woman who will be part of a protest more than three days of, of one week, as we have seen in recent time reopen the factories. I mean, Lagos used to be the home of enterprises of industrialization. The entire Lupeju, uh, my two, I mean, when textile industry was textile, that's where you have an uh, army of employed people. Now it's full of unemployed people because factories are down. I would have expected this speech to have touched on new industrial initiative. Of course, some of them, this government is already doing uh, executive order 03, the need to patronize what we produce, the need to make sure cotton is made available. So, because those are labor intensive industries, I'm just giving as an example. But the same thing could be done for automobile, could be, could be done for chemical uh, uh, and leather industries, you know, which Lego used to be reputable for. You know, so I think the speech could be far more enriched and of course maybe more of more nice niceness, if there's any word like that, more of more empathy, you know, and uh, Lastly, even when President Buhari rightly said the youth should key into some of those initiatives, you should, I also expect the president to go further to say there should be framework for them to engage the youth. And interestingly, we have official institutions that should also drive that. I think this country will have Ministry of uh, Youth, you know, uh, I'm not sure how is that, is it attached to sport now or to education? Uh, you have Ministry of Women Affairs. Those are the ones which will have directed those ministers to hit the ground running. Because it's not just the president. The president has all the agencies that can drive. There are a lot of MDAs that are supposed to drive the youth agenda. Where are they? I mean, they should be on duty to make sure you have a framework to engage the youth. Because it's not just to do it for the youth. You should do it for themselves. And we have seen a lot of energy, positive one, that could have channeled through, the, uh, through, through, through what has happened in recent times. So I want to say in summary to your first opening remark that, uh, or question, uh, to say that we are paying the price for youth ex exclusion. Now we must mainstream the youth into development, youth inclusion. In fact, that's the promise of sustainable development uh, uh, agenda. We must also have our vision for youth development, not just youth, you know, to, to transform this huge abundance of energy into positive, uh, you know, uh, means of driving development. I mean, I was a member of the uh, uh, 2014 uh, National Conference, in fact, chairman of the subcommittee on uh, youth and, uh, and, and labor. And uh, we had a lot of robust, you know, recommendations, you know, on how to, you know, make the youth uh, to be partners in development process. We talk of youth vision. 
you know, youth, youth program. You know, we need to realize the vision which has been. In fact, there's needs for youth policy. You know, so I think uh, we should turn this tragedy to opportunities. You know, to make a difference. And never again do we have this kind of carnage avoidable, preventable. Uh, some of the things that have happened completely unacceptable in 2020 Nigeria. Thank you, sir. Now the hashtag NSARS protests were entirely youth driven. The absence of established institutions such as NLC, TUC, even Market Women's Association was noted. Individuals of other generations did join in, but as an individual, not as an institution. Do you think that that was a mistake? No, I, I mean, to do, I think we've done so much analysis. You are part of the discussions, you know. I think, you know, we should stop agonizing, you know, and I think it's time for us to organize our thought processes to move forward. Again, it's completely, uh, it doesn't capture the whole picture that uh, organizations like labor are not on duty. I mean, we can raise we can be debating that, and I don't think it's important to go back to that. I mean, some of us have been very loud to say that the struggle against brutality of the police is legitimate. Don't forget, we're also products of series of brutality, brutalities over the years. I mean, if you check the record, I mean, some of us have been harassed, tear gas, through different struggles that were waged. And so it's not just the youth. Brutality is not divisible, you know, and I think most people have supported the struggle. Then let me also tell you this. From the point of view of labor, youths are not just future leaders, they are future workers. In fact, they are supposed to be present workers. You know? So it's in our best interest. I think uh, uh, there is uh, the late, uh, the late musician, you know, Mr. Rest in Peace, uh, Dami Raya, you know, of Joss. He had a popular lyric of uh, Yara Moya Gube in Alsa, which means youths are our precious, they are our future. Uh, so nobody will stand by, uh, you know, to, to, to find the crisis that we have at hand, but you also know that there are rules of engagement, even in protestation, in protest. Uh, and I think the lesson of this for the future, we can analyze it very well. Wait, streets have their value to know. They have the value, street protests. They promote visibility. They draw attention to your plight. And these youths have been so wonderful. I was highly impressed. I've never seen the display of national flag, patriotism. I also expect President Barry to even celebrate that because it shows that the youth are partner in nation building. And there's, there was also unity of purpose as long as it lasted. I mean, you don't talk of faith, region, they all held hands together. So, which is also the kind of things we used to exhibit when we do pan labor uh, struggle. Uh, but you also, the point I also want to demonstrate is that there's a limit to street visibility. I mean, for one week, for two weeks, because streets are also made up other forces than your own. In any case, it was on the street that most youths were killed before. So I expect that, you know, the, one of the greatest uh, challenges of this protest is that you have to, you've made a point, the five point has been uh, accepted from streets. We should have diversified our agenda to move into negotiating tables so that we don't allow the street to be hijacked by forces other than the ones that uh, uh, the youths were really proposing. But, I, do, uh, but to do, I don't think we should believe all this. You know, it's not the time to organize, it's time for us to organize. Well uh, but the point I thought you've made very well is that we cannot, we, we cannot leave the youth only even to president, to governors. I mean, I've seen uh, Governor uh, Sanwolu, fantastic good job moving from up and down and the way you have brought the camera, but beyond him, where are the senators? Where are the reps? You know, we are the chairman of local government. Well, they will probably you know, claim that there the is coffee. Leaders, traditional <laughs> rulers. They will probably claim that there is no, coffee. Where, no, I say before the coffee, before the coffee, you know, the, the, the pro, pro, protest, protest takes place at the constraints, not just in Lagos, in Abuja, in Jos, you know, but everybody, assume is the president alone, no, we have the governors, we have the rep. If I, in any case, some of the challenges are supposed to be taken by reps, by senators. If we say, the youth say, okay, no, we don't have uh, leaders, we already have our demands. Now, we have elected leaders who should make a case for them. They should be the one on the negotiating table. That's the beauty of democracy. We are not helpless because we've elected people. So I think what the lesson of is for the future that all of us have to be on duty. We are not on duty. Uh, all of us will pay heavy price as we are paying now. I mean, for me, it's so saddening 
just coming out of COVID, we saw the devastation it has caused for us, not in terms of life, but largely in terms of livelihood. And then we are back to from uh, COVID pandemic now to uh, protest pandemic. You know, we saw mm. the casualties of lives, possibly worse than even COVID, and now to livelihood. Well, thank yeah. you very much, Comrade Isa Ramon, for joining us on The Morning Show.